Hey again, hobby friends. You know, back when we were kids, it was great. Every time we got a new toy, we'd rush home and rip it out of the package and immediately begin playing with it. Well, now that we're older and our toys are a little bit more complex, it's a little bit more of a time commitment for us to get to the point to really fully enjoy playing with our toys. And when we rush home with our new game and see all our beautiful toys inside, our moment of excitement can quickly crumble around us. How will we ever get all of these miniatures painted so we can play them all on the table? But do not lose hope, because today we are going to attempt just that. With just a few simple steps, we are going to try to get all of our miniatures painted and still look awesome on that tabletop so we can enjoy them in our gaming. When I have a large painting project in front of me, in order to help myself from getting overwhelmed, I try to keep things simple. I want to keep it to as few steps as possible and then simply try to maximize the most I can get out of each one of those steps. Each one has to be important. Each one needs to make a big impact so I cannot spend a ton of time on each model, but it still wows from the tabletop. The game I'll be tackling today is Judgment Eternal Champions, brought to us by today's sponsor, CreatureCaster. Live on Kickstarter right now, Judgment Eternal Champions is an action-packed and competitive tabletop miniatures game for two players. Inspired by the exciting play style of MOBA games, Judgment's gods pit heroes against each other in an epic duel to gain ultimate control. The Kickstarter is off to a flaming start, and they've already unlocked a number of stretch goals, including five new heroes that will be added in the starter box. You can back the game at a couple of different tiers, depending on how many extra goodies you want to get your grubby little mitts on, as well as choosing between the competitor's set, which has pre-built high-quality PVC minis, and the collector's set, where all the amazing miniatures are the resin quality that Creature Caster is known for. The models that I'm painting today in the video are the resin ones from the collector set. A big thank you to Creature Caster for putting out this awesome game as well as supporting the channel and allowing me to paint these awesome minis. And speaking of painting these minis, let's get to it so we can actually play the game. So let's walk through my current minimal steps, maximum damage painting process. With only four simple steps, I'm going to try to create the maximum quality that I can while still getting this all done in a short period of time. My first step is the foundation of the whole process, laying the groundwork for powerful colors that will come later. I want to build really strong light and shadow in the beginning. So after priming the models black, I spray them from above with white ink. The point of this is to be able to see all the volumes of the figure. So I want to cover almost all of that black. There should be very little true black showing and only in the deepest, darkest recesses. And I'm going to go over this with a couple of layers. When you put black and then white, the white is kind of dulled down. And so it, it looks more like a gray. So with a couple of thin coats, I'm going to build up that white particularly with areas I want to draw more interest, like around the head and shoulders. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, that's fine. You can do this with a spray can of white as well, or you can just take a big, soft, dry brush, and you can brush on these layers of white little by little over top. Now, before we start adding colors, I want to crank this light and dark contrast up to 11. So I'm going to take a titanium white paint. This is a heavy body artist acrylic paint. It's not going to be as chalky or as translucent as most miniature whites are. And this will really give us a big bang for our buck in only one coat. I take this white and hit all of the details that I want the brightest. I focused on the most important areas of the model, like around the head and shoulders, as well as any specific details unique to the model, like their weapons. Now, when you start adding this stuff, the first thing that you're going to notice is that white that you sprayed on your model isn't a true white. This stuff will jump out as true white. You'll see your spray paint is actually shades of gray. And this is an important step. Our eyes often think when we spray something or paint something white or near white, it is true white, but it's often not. So this will really punch up our colors later and will make it look like we spent a whole lot more time developing those layers of color. 
Oh, and don't worry about being perfectly neat or really perfect with your edge highlighting and details with this white step. That's really not important. In fact, this is a great use of our time. We can knock this out quick and not worrying about being really perfect because the colors we lay on later are gonna cover up any of our imperfections while still showing these bright highlights underneath. All right, enough of the black and white. Let's get on to step two, which is our basic application of color. I'm simply just gonna be using one coat of contrast paint over each different surface on the model. Now you don't have to use contrast paint here. You could use transparent line from Monument Hobbies and mix any color that you may need. I just use a little bit of uh, flow aid or flow improver as a medium and it works the same way and you can get this whole line for a lot cheaper than contrast or you could mix inks just the same with the flow aid as well and it will act very similar really the important thing is that the paint that we're using for this process has two main properties the first one is that it flows off of our highlighted areas and into the recesses and number two it's transparent enough to show that underneath white to black layer that we already did, but it's strong enough in coloration that it doesn't all look faded and dull like what would happen if you just thin down regular acrylic paint. And it really is a fine line with that transparency yet still vibrant colors. And that's why I like the transparent line from Monument. Now, if you do go with contrast paints or you mix your own, you kind of want to be careful as you mix them. Certain colors like this Blood Angels Red is naturally very opaque. If you put a solid coat of this over our under layer of white to black, it's basically going to cover it all up. So you're going to have to thin it. But some of the colors, like the Plague Bearer Flesh, is perfect right out of the bottle. What I'd say is just try them a little bit on a sheet of paper or something first if you're not sure and see how much of the white of the paper is still shown underneath. Now this step, just like step one, does not require us to be an expert miniature painter to make things look really good. But there's two things you're going to want to keep in mind while you're applying your color this way. First one, make sure you're always pulling the paint towards the shadows. Don't be pushing it up into the highlights. We want the highlights to remain brightest, so we want the least amount of our color from the pigment on our paints to be deposited there. Next, we always want to make sure we don't have too much paint on our brush. Now, this is a universal thing for painting. I often will just dab my brush to a paper towel before I start painting a model, no matter what kind of painting I'm doing. But that's particularly important here. If our paint is waterlogged on our brush and we touch our mini, it's going to go everywhere and it's going to be a pain to clean up. We're still in step two here, but technically 2B, I think you're going to be okay with letting me get away with that, and that is us painting on our metallics. For metallics, there's a couple things to keep in mind. One, I like to mix in a little bit of ink or a little bit of paint with my metallics for their base coat to try to pull down the sheen a little bit. Later on, we can build up that brightness and it will really pop. But I like to use something like a bluish black, like this Payne's Gray, for my silvers. And for golds and coppers, I like to use a warmish reddish brown color. But you could really try any kind of colors with your golds. A green gold might be really cool as well. Just experiment and see if you can find some interesting base metallic colors you can mix yourself. Oh, and a quick note on the metals. Don't worry about making them thin enough where you see the white to black underneath. We want a solid opaque coat for all of our metallics. All right, we're already halfway home, baby. We are on to step three, and this is my favorite way to add depth, color, and really pop our minis very easily, and that is with oil washes. Now, before you freak out and yell, but John, this isn't a simple step. It uses oil paints. I assure you it is extremely easy. And in fact, it's much more simple than most of the miniature painting techniques that you're probably already using on your models. The basic thing you just need to keep in mind is mineral spirits instead of water. Now I use water when I want to thin down my regular miniature paints. I use mineral spirits if I want to thin down oil paints. And if I want to clean my brush, with regular paints, I use water. If I want to clean my brush with oil paints, I use mineral spirits. That's really all you need to know. Oh, and to make cleanup even easier on my lazy self, I line my hard palette with tin foil so that I can just toss it once the paint dries up in a day or two. I mix up 
five different washes for all the models. Black, a 50-50 mix of burnt umber and black, pure burnt umber, magenta with just a little touch of burnt umber, and then olive green with a little touch of black. Oh, and if you've never tried oil washers or you wanna pick up a couple new colors, I'll have affiliate links in the video description like I typically do with the stuff I use in my videos. The application process with oil washes is super simple and straightforward. I just make sure I cover the surface completely, but not so drowning in the wash. To save time and cut down on how often I have to clean the brush off, I like to use one of my wash colors and all the different sections that I wanna paint that color before I move on to the next. By the time I've hit all of the brown black wash mix on each place that I want it, about five to 10 minutes has passed. This is just the right amount of time for me to go back to my first model and use a small makeup sponge to rub away the wash everywhere except the deepest recesses of the model. Using a magenta wash for skin may seem like a terrible idea at first glance, but I learned just how amazing it can look from Marco Frizzoni's YouTube channel, Not Just Makeup. Make sure you check out his awesome work as well. It adds a wonderful richness and depth to the skin in almost no time at all. Remember, we're about taking four steps and making maximum impact out of each of the four. And that's why oil washes really do it for me. They do two things really, really well. They add an extra depth of contrast because they really settle into our recesses well and create a very vibrant shift from shadow to highlight. But also, they add depth of color because where I remove them, there's still a faint tint of them being there. So it adds more color depth. And it looks like we spent a lot of time adding layer upon layer of unique colors to create this depth in our model when we didn't do that at all. Oil washes can make metals look awesome. Instead of just rubbing all of the oil wash off, I just dab at some of the sections where I want that bright shiny metal to show and it shows a natural wear pattern in almost no time at all. Our sorceress here looks like she's in the midst of raising some a dead minion from the ground in some magical hazy smoke. I thought this would be a cool opportunity to try something new with oils I've never done before. I washed this zombie thing entirely with white oil wash. I then removed it from just the surfaces like we've done in everything else here today, and it looks like there's a hazy smoke that this minion is being risen from. And I thought it turned out pretty cool, even though I had no idea if it was gonna work. Now, I know I advertise this as a four-step process, but in all reality, it could be a three-step process. If I had a miniature board game with 50-plus models in it, I'd probably stop here for most of them and just continue on for step four for just maybe the heroes and the big bad villains. So you could knock everything out here in three steps. Should have named the video three steps, not four steps. Step four is our finishing touches step, but just like our other steps, we're about maximizing output for minimal time here. So every brush stroke needs to count. That's why I'm using pretty darn thick paint here. I don't want to have to go over everything multiple times. I'm using bright, light colors here for the brightest highlights and interest. And in our four step process, this is the only step where having sound brush control matters. We are often making small little highlights, but do not fret. If you are doing this for 20 or 30 models in a box game, that means you're gonna be 20 or 30 models better at this step by the time you're done. And this step is something that we use in just about any kind of model we paint. Here, we're just not frustrated over having to do it 100 times and get it absolutely perfect for our models to just be brought up that extra 10% but we're also gonna use a little trick that aids us from being so perfect in these final details. I'm never gonna be drawing a nice, thin, crisp line. All I'm gonna be doing for my highlights is dabbing little dots or little lines. Not only will this mean I decrease my chance of screwing up a nice, perfect edge highlight, but it also shows a bit of texture and interest in our models that in this small scale really feels appropriate. 
And it's good practice because I love doing this kind of highlighting on a lot of my models. And I do the same dabbing and dots for all of my metallics as well. I go back to my pure silver, not mixed with any colors at all, and just hit my bright little dots where the light would be most reflected. And that's it, four simple steps to get your new box game painted so you can get on with game night and impress your friends and family and neighbors and pet turtles. And like I said at the beginning, you could tweak these four steps and find out what works best for you and find ways to improve on my four step system. You can also take this as a starting point for higher quality paint jobs. After step four, you could go back in and add more depth of shadow. You could maybe do a second oil wash. You could push the highlights even higher. So this is really a great foundation to any kind of miniature painting. Oh, and if you want to see the models that I painted for today's video in a battle report and learn how to play Judgment, my good buddies over at Play on Tabletop are going to have a battle report with my models in just a couple of weeks. So go check out their channel and give them some love. They better wash the maple syrup off their little sticky fingers before they start fiddling with my models. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. You know, if you like the channel and you want to support me to continue to make videos, there's a couple of things you could do. First of all, you could consider joining my Patreon, my main source of income for this channel, where you get access to my private Discord server where we can talk about all sorts of cool mini things any day of the week, as well as get access to my weekly vlog. Or you could like to uh, maybe buy a shirt if you like to slay the gray, and I think you probably do, you could support me there as well. And then finally, while you're shopping for hobby goodies out on Amazon, you could use my affiliate links put in the video description below so you can get what you need to slay the gray at no additional cost, and they give me a few shickles in return. Thanks. Be good to one another. I'll see you again soon. You can consider the oil wash instead of rub rubbing it, rub, 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 rubbing it. <laughs> what we do here on the channel, who's we? Why do people say we? It's just John in his basement.